Well, we're here with Brad Dacus, the founder of Pacific Justice Institute. You founded it in 1997, Defending Religious Freedom Without Cost. I, cost. I love that. And the Dacus Report is heard on radio stations around the country. You've been on the O'Reilly Factor, the Today Show, MSNBC, CNN, Dateline NBC. Oh, my gosh. Brad, um, you have been around the world, and you're in our little studios here today, and we really appreciate it. I'm very excited. Christianity and culture have parted ways. Lifestyles are divergent from what we who are people of faith would say we um, adhere to. And we're here to give leaders of companies words of wisdom. Welcome here. Oh, it's great. I, I appreciate what you're doing, what you stand for, and it's a, it's a privilege to be here. Thanks. Thanks so much. Well, let's get right into it. We're talking to Christian CEOs who are trying to run their company and represent their faith and stay out of jail, right? Or stay right. out of the courts, at least. So right. how does a CEO even begin to think about doing something substantive without getting in trouble? What can they do? How can they share their faith legally? Is that a good place to start? Yeah. And I think uh, the best place is when they're first starting their company. Uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of people, they say, I'm going to start a company and I, I, I want it to be a Christian company, but what do I do? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's important for them to understand all the things they can do to have a Christian company. For example, uh, their mission statement. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a secular mission statement. If their purpose is to glorify God in their business and how they serve their customers, uh, that's what the, the mission statement should reflect. Uh -huh. So they should, they should put that in their mission statement. Um, they can post their, their mission statement all over the company, and uh, they can make it really clear. They can also, uh, in, their, in their symbols and uh, their business cards, uh, if they wish, they could reflect in the name of their company. Uh, they don't have to be secular financial. They can call it Cornerstone Financial mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, Jesus Floris, if mm -hmm. you will, or something. Mm -hmm. um, from, I'm not a marketing expert, so that's please take that okay. <laughs> with a grain of salt. Yeah. But, but they can reflect their faith in the name of their company, their mission of their company, their symbols in their company, and uh, right from the get-go. And that would be helpful to define that in the bylaws as opposed to it not being defined in the bylaws. Right. Uh, they can d define that in their, uh, their bylaws and their policies. Mm -hmm. uh, they can spell it all out. Now, they also need to spell out in their policies and, and, and uh, all their information uh, to their employees uh, how they don't discriminate as well, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. they do not have to hide their faith uh, at all when it comes to uh, the workplace. And uh, that mm. needs to be something they, they should implement from the get-go yeah. uh, when a company's first getting started. Okay, well, how about if we do a little checklist of can I do this, can I do that? Does that sound okay? Oh, sure. I would say the average CEO who's faith-based in America, a Christ follower, would say, can I pray at the company meeting? Uh, yes. Uh, they definitely can pray at the company meeting. Uh, they can... Uh, uh, have uh, start their their, uh, their their meetings with prayer. Uh, there was a case out of the Ninth Circuit where an employer did this, and uh, and he referenced scripture at the beginning of the meeting, and he was sued. An employee quit and sued him uh, because uh, this violated their religious beliefs and convictions. Uh -huh. And the Ninth Circuit ruled in favor of the business owner hmm. because the employee had never let the business owner know that this violated their, their faith mm -hmm. and never gave the business owner an opportunity to reasonably accommodate the sincerely held religious beliefs and practices of the employee. Mm -hmm. If the employee doesn't let the employer know, then how's the employer to, uh, going to be able to accommodate them? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as long as they're willing and able to accommodate employees who need, who need to be accommodated, for example, say, oh, i tell you what, uh, we're going to start the beginning of the meeting with, with prayer and scripture when we're done. Um, We'll let you know. You can come in. Uh, that's an accommodation. That's a reasonable accommodation. Okay. Well, I worked for a company for 20 years, Service Master, $9 billion. And our first objective, inside the front cover of the New York Stock Exchange, uh, the, the report, the stockholders report, said to honor God in all we do. Is that something I could put on a, on a statement today? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You can put it on your letterhead if you okay. want. Uh, you can make it very clearly known for uh, not only employees, but also the, the customers and the community. Uh -huh. So I can pray before a meal, I can pray before a meeting, I can put a, a faith-friendly statement or a faith-obvious statement somewhere in my mission, vision, values. Right. And also you could 
You can post things on the walls of your of your uh, business. For example, you can have Bible verses posted. Okay. Uh, you can even have Christian music playing. Uh, okay. There was a company in uh, Northern California where uh, they heard our presentation, our training uh, that we provide at Pacific Justin Institute, and afterwards he went ahead and started playing Christian music. Uh huh. And an employee came in and said, uh, "Is this Christian music?" And he says, "Yes." He says, uh, "Are you a Christian?" He says, "Yes." And the employee asked a question. He says, what does it mean to be a Christian? Because we take it for granted in many parts of the country that everyone knows what it means to be a Christian. Uh -huh. There are many parts, like the San Francisco Bay Area and other parts, where they don't know. Yeah. It's what I call pre-Christian. Mm -hmm. And this employer shared the gospel, responded to the questions, the yep. extent that he was asked, and that employee decided to re become a Christian and receive Christ. Wow, that's great. So they can display it in their, with their music and their pictures, and what's on the walls, and, uh, and if, if an employee creates a disturbance about the, they can't do their work because of this Christian music playing, uh, then an employer might want to consider uh, playing the music without the, the words. Mm -hmm. uh, that would make a fantastic uh, lawsuit from our perspective. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because the other side would have to prove that the music itself somehow uh, invaded their spirituality, which would be a in very interesting lawsuit that I, right, I don't right. think the plaintiff would win. Right, right. Okay, how about I'm talking to an employee, and they have a difficult situation in their work where they're maybe not performing or maybe they're having a family issue that is causing grief. Is it okay to talk about what we as believers might think the Bible has to say to help them? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. And, but yet you need to be sensitive to their response. Uh, and if the employee is, is someone who uh, you can tell is, is not comfortable, um, then you need to back off. You need to always have uh, little opportunities for them to no longer continue the conversation. You need to get, mm -hmm. make it comfortable for them. But what's even more important, I think, is uh, to qualify the employee right up front. When they're, and, and that is, uh -huh. it's easy to do that by saying uh, uh, something like, uh, you know, the pastor uh, said a great, a real funny joke Sunday morning about such and such. And the employee will say, Oh, you know, if they're a Christian, they'll say, oh, or you, you're a Christian. Where do you go to church? Yeah. They'll respond. You'll know that they're a Christian. Uh -huh. And I, I know a friend of mine, Barry McGuire, uh, has uh -huh. this down to, to uh, perfectly or how to do this. And he's yeah. practiced this. Uh, and then if the person is not a believer, then uh, they, will, uh, they will not respond. And you can sort of tell by their face, oh, okay, this person is probably not a believer. Mm -hmm. And so as, as things come up, like you said, uh, there's, tri there's crisis, you know, tragedy. You say, hey, I, I want you to know I heard about what you're going through. I'm praying for you. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, if I can encourage you, let me know. Um, and then as real problems come up, they'll know that you care. They'll know that you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. And that's when they come up and, they, and they'll approach you and say, you know, I don't know what to do. You know, you're a Christian. Um, how, how, how do Christians deal with this? Or how mm -hmm. do I? And then you're, the, the door is opened up. So could I say something to an employee says, I don't know what to do. My, my kid just announced that they are on drugs and they got kicked out of school. Is it okay for the employer who's faith-based to say, can we pray about that? Or would it be better to say, would you be comfortable if we prayed about that? What would be the right response? Well, I think first, the first response, the thing to do would be to say, um, say, you know, I, I, can just, I can just tell you how I, as a, as a Christian, how I've seen this dealt with before. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, first thing is, is to pray for them. And, uh, and I, would, I would first off saying, you know, I said, I want you to know I'm going to be, be praying for your son. Uh -huh. And, uh, and then, and then as, as, the, as, the, as he wants to, as things open up, uh, or if he says, you know, if you ever want me to pray with you about the pray with it, let me know. I'd be happy to. But, so, so I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm letting you know, I, I would love to pray for you. That's okay. Yeah, you could say that. Or say, or, but you, I, would, I, would, I would make it incremental. Mm -hmm. So okay. say, I, first I would say, you know, I want you to, I say, well, I'm going I'm to be praying for your son. I says, uh, and if you ever want me to pray with you about it, let me know. Uh -huh. Make sure that it's, it's something that they, that they want uh, and that they uh, decide to, to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to take the, the bait to, to do, if you will, that they okay. want to do it, uh, that they never feel in a position where they're, it's being uh, thrust upon them, if you will. Yeah. Um, but also uh, the, the role, for example, of... Uh, of, of Christian ministers. For example, what I would advise, I'd say, you know, something that could be really helpful, I know, is, uh, is to, 
is the, is the role of, of church youth groups. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've heard of parents who've had problems with their kids, they're rebelling against them. They get involved in a church youth group. And I know my church has a great church youth group uh, where it gives them a, a third party to give it, be an influence to them. Yeah. And, and that can be very effective. Non-believers want something. Yeah. And they'll often jump on that. And it's, yeah. and it's very helpful to the kids. And it's also uh, brings that dialogue of faith in a constructive way into yeah. that relationship. I wish we were uh, like Fox News or something right now where you could have that poll that the listeners are thinking while we're talking. Because I, I venture to guess, I've talked to hundreds of CEOs across the country in our 40 plus convened groups, 500 members. And I think that most of them right now, I'm, I'm guessing 80% of them would say, I thought for sure that I couldn't say I would pray with you. I thought for sure I couldn't say, did you hear that church youth groups are a good uh, potential you know, source for help? I think most CEOs think they can't do much of anything these days. What would you say to those guys out there, those women out there who are running companies and think, I just can't say anything or I'll get in real problems? I'll have to call Brad. Yeah, <laughs> and we are there for free counsel all the time at Pacific Justice Institute mm -hmm. uh, for people all across the country. Uh, but uh, the, the reality is uh, employers uh, can share their faith with employees. Uh, they need to be respectful, though, because whenever you have a supervisor sharing with someone uh, who works under them, mm -hmm. you have that risk of intimidation. You okay. have that risk of uh, alleged harassment. Mm -hmm. So uh, they need to understand that, that harassment... Uh, it amounts to either name calling, which we really don't have too much of a problem with mm -hmm. uh, in Christian businesses. Uh, you know, you pagan. You know, no, that's that's usually uh -huh. not a problem, um, and uh, and it should never be a problem. Uh, but second is uh, harassment kicks in as if the employee uh, gives a signal that they're really not interested, and the employer or the, the supervisor is non-responsive. It continues to badger them or uh, uh, in a direct way. Right. So let's say I'm that. Uh, atheist employee, and I say to you, my Christian employer, I say, look, Brad, I appreciate that you are a Christian. I'm not, and I'm uncomfortable when you share your faith with me. Can we sort of end that? Yeah, and employers say, hey, I totally understand. I, I, I applaud you for, for letting me know and sharing that with me. I will totally respect that and, and thank you. I thank you so much for letting me know that uh -huh. because uh, we want to be very respectful in this, in this office for, for all our employees and what they believe. Yeah. And, uh, and that's very important to us. Hmm. And uh, so you, you, you acknowledge it. You res give respect for it. You don't debate it. You don't qualify what you're doing or justify it right up front. But here's what's exciting. Mm -hmm. There are so many ways that employers can share their faith direct with their employees in manners that completely avoid the harassment question. Yeah. For example, uh, an employer can write out their their testimony, their story, uh -huh. uh, and they can email it to all the employees. And they need to say number one, say many of you wonder what makes me tick, what drives me, what motivates me. Huh. So uh, I've attached uh, my story as far as what is what drives me. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not required reading. This is completely optional. And uh, but if you'd like to read it, feel free to do so. Wow. Now what a great intro. So so let's right. go over that again real quick. So many of you wonder what makes me tick. Right. There's no obligation to read what I'm sending out. Right. And there was one more thing, if I remember. No yeah. obligation to read it. You wonder what makes me tick. Yeah. And but this is my story. But this, yeah, this is my story. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the main reasons employers won't do this, uh, except, of course, is the, the law. I'm afraid they're going to get sued somehow. Uh, second to that is the idea that, well, I really shouldn't share my testimony because last week I used some profane language when we didn't get the deal. Hmm. I mean, this is reality. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're not. We're not. We're, we're. We're not perfect. Because that's that's why we're here. Why we need Jesus. Why we need forgiveness and continued sanctification. Right. But nonetheless, Satan will try to hit that that employer with this thinking, like you hypocrite. You don't send this out. Well, the 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 message of the testimony is all about how we're not perfect mm -hmm. and how God is mm -hmm. still working with us and mm -hmm. still sanctifying us and working with us. Yeah. And that message of humility is, is a part of the testimony, not that we have arrived and we've made it. Yeah. And, and yeah. when we understand that, there's no reason why we shouldn't be sharing our testimony and the grace that God's given us and continue working through us. Wow. Well, there's actually over 40,000 employees 
that are working with convened CEOs across the country right now. Uh, so imagine if even 10,000 of those employees got a letter like that in their mailbox sometime before Christmas. That would be a great, that'd be a great, uh, a great goal. Oh, yes. And, and in addition to that, uh, employers can also have uh, software programs where there's Bible verse of the day is sent out to the employees. Hmm. Uh, if the employee doesn't want to click the Bible verse, it's up to the employee. Uh -huh. It's the encouragement, inspiration. They don't have to. Wow. Uh, the employer can also have Bibles, uh, free Bibles, or uh, you know, the case for faith, or uh -huh. uh, purpose-driven life. Kind of a lending library or a gift library. Just a gift. They could have it stacked up in the lunchroom with the little sign saying "limit one per person." Uh -huh. These are free, and they can give those out to the employees. Yeah. This now, is the, would there have to be other faith books there, like something from? Buddhism, Confucius, no? No, Doesn't because be. this is the employer's company. Okay. And the employer is free to live their faith fully and through their, their company, and they don't have to, to provide these, these, these additional forms. Uh -huh. These are books that the employer wants the employees to be able to have. It's not required reading, so I say these are free, not required reading, uh, courtesy of the name of the company. Yeah. And so those can be provided... Uh, and made available uh, to mm -hmm. the employees uh, in addition wow. to other materials as well. Uh, so wow. these are the real things that employers can do right now. What about setting a Christian atmosphere? We've talked a little bit about that, but everything we do doesn't have to be overtly faith in action, evangelistic. Wouldn't you love to have a Bible? But there are some things I like to say and convene if we just kind of began to pull back the covers on the meaning and purpose of life by the way the company ethos sort of uh, displays itself, everything doesn't have to be a, a play on faith, right? What are some ideas for that? Yeah, actually, there's, there's a number of ways that employers can reach out and provide things. Mm -hmm. They're actually really constructive and helpful for the yep. employees. Uh, for example, they could provide like backpacks uh -huh. uh, for the uh, the employees, and uh, those backpacks they provide could have a Bible verse on them, or could have something um, a Bible in them if they want, huh. uh, or they could be non non religious. They don't it doesn't yeah. have to be everything doesn't have to be religious uh, to right. be to be Christian. See there again, I think the average CEO that's faith based in America would say, well, I would give a backpack, but I wouldn't put a Bible in it because I think that's not legal. That's not true, right? Yeah. It is legal. Now, is it is it profitable? Is it possibly going to be received the right way? Uh, is it a, a step too far based on the, 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 the employees and the culture that they have? Uh -huh. Possibly. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's possibly. Uh, maybe a student study Bible might be. Maybe customizing something that's, that's more uh, for the benefit of the students. Uh, but that's something they can do. In addition to that, they can even be more bolder than that, for that matter. They could actually uh, fund the students to go through to vacation Bible schools. Uh, a real common problem huh. that employee, employers have during the summertime, to, in America today, you have both parents working in at least half the, the circumstances, mom and dad. Suddenly you've got kids who are out of school, twiddling yeah. their thumbs. Parents are saying, what are we going to do? How do we deal with this? Well, here's a fantastic, incredible uh, mission opportunity. Okay. Vacation Bible schools are provided by a church. Now, they may last for one week, you know, Monday through Friday. Right. For one week. And many pe people say, okay, great, there's one week and that's it. Well, what an employer should do, what I recommend, is they get a list of all the vacation Bible school programs uh, provided in their community by the different churches mm -hmm. in their community. And oftentimes they'll find that it pretty much fills up an entire summer. Mm -hmm. And they can post those vacation Bible schools or send out an email. Uh, letting the, the employees know that the employer will, will pay and underwrite the cost for each of these vacation Bible schools. They'll pay the tuition directly to vacation Bible school mm -hmm. uh, without charge. They'll, they'll pick up the cost mm -hmm. uh, to help uh, parents who have children who uh, are, will have extra time this summer. Yeah. A non-believing mom or dad who are working um, would love this mm -hmm. because it's like a babysitter. Mm -hmm. uh, a Christian mom or dad would love it even more. Yeah. Uh, and this shows that the, that the employer cares. Uh, but what about, but also like college scholarships. Uh huh. Uh, this is also exciting and it also shows compassion. Yeah. What when does employer, that look like? Well, when an employer says, um, we will provide college scholarships, say $500 per semester 
for every employer's child who, uh, just, who chooses to attend one of these uh, Christian college universities. Or they could just be one college. They could just say Biola, for example, mm -hmm. if they wish. Mm -hmm. Or they can have several. And mm. it's up to them. It's their scholarship. They can have whatever rules. They can say it must have at least a 2.5 GPA. So you wouldn't have to say a Christian university and or a non-Christian university. Right. They could okay. just spell out, these are the ones we, we approve. We'll give scholarships if your child goes to one of these Christian colleges, universities, uh -huh. and university. And it's really fantastic because uh, it has a wonderful benefit. That is, it reduces turnover. Yeah. You've got a child enrolled in a college. Uh, and uh, say at Biola, and the parent, say the mother, is thinking about leaving and going to another company. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, if she does that, that child is not going to get a scholarship in the next semester. Mm -hmm. That's an incentive. Number one, number two, it shows that the, the company that they care about their employees and their yep. kids. Yeah. And it's that above and beyond that really has a, a major impact on employee loyalty and turnover. It's not providing what everyone else provides. That's expected. That's an entitlement, if you will. It's going above and beyond it, and that's an excellent way of, of ministering uh, as well. Sweet. Well, you have um, something to share with the people who are listening that is a tool that you'd love them to have. You want to explain Faith in the Workplace a little bit and how they can get a copy of the Faith in the Workplace tool? Oh, certainly. Uh, there's, there's many different ways we can evangelize, and uh, we've just covered on, uh, talked about some of them. But uh, in this, this uh, DVD, uh, it's called Faith in the Workplace. Mm -hmm. It talks, uh, oh, there's a whole smorgasbord in part two of all the specific ways employers can evangelize their employees, their customers, their community, um, how they can reach out in ways they never would have dreamed of or imagined legally, as well as some things they can do to help defend themselves as well. Great. This is provided with a, with a simply a, for $1,000, no, I'm just joking, <laughs> um, without charge, uh, we make this available uh, to uh, all the, the, the people who are watching this broadcast. Yeah. Just contact our office. And uh, So what, what we're going to do is on the lower thirds, you're going to see uh, viewers. Uh, you're going to see how to get the DVD. So just do what it says on the bottom uh, section of the video that you're watching right now, and you'll be able to get a chance to get faith in the workplace. Right. And, and then you're going to come to Leadership Summit in Hilton Heads, uh, Carolinas, right. May 3, 4, 5, and do some more uh, longer talking about all these subjects, about what a CEO can and can't do in the workplace. Yeah, as well as how to, to defend themselves and, uh, and to help uh, insulate themselves from, from litigation. It's, it's, it's so important. You know, we at Pacific Justice, we provide training videos. Uh, we uh, do a lot of speaking in churches. Uh, yeah. do a lot of preaching in churches. We do seminars. Uh, but I also want people out there to listen, listen to this to understand that we also will come into a, a company and, uh, and provide specific training yeah. for senior management as well, all without charge. And then, of course, we'll also defend them without charge. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a little t tape here of uh, a little example of uh, one of those defenses that we engaged in successfully in Great. defending religious freedom. So if there's somebody who is in a bit of a jam right now, they uh, are being sued or there's pending legis pen pending lawsuit against them as a leader, as a CEO, they should uh, give Pacific Justice Institute a call, and uh, you'll help them out. Absolutely, without charge. That's, yeah. that's what we're here for, all that's across amazing. the country. That's amazing. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing you at the Leadership Summit in Hilton Head. And would you come back and uh, talk to us a little bit more about some other subjects? Oh, absolutely. There, the good news, the good news, Greg, is that there is so much in the way of opportunity. Uh, that uh, we should not be discouraged. We've just, we're just touching on just a, a, a fraction of the opportunities that are there. And uh, it is very encouraging and very positive for us to, uh, to really look in and dig into, into what God, by His grace, has given us in this day and hour to live for Him in the workplace. Yeah, I'm so happy that you came in. And I'm so happy that um, I'm pretty confident that hundreds of CEOs will begin to think that they don't have to do nothing anymore as it relates to their faith. They don't have to live in fear that they can't do this and they can't do that, but maybe uh, let's just covet to pray together, a covenant to pray together that um, people would find this freedom to do something instead of sit back. So thanks again, Brad, for coming in from Pacific Justice Institute. We'll look forward to talking more. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.